Hello. So I got a great question about how to price supervision services for somebody wanting to add that to what they do in their practice. First, I'd like to thank Therapy Notes for sponsoring us today. So I think that we automatically make the assumption that it needs to be less money because often someone seeking supervision is somebody who is associate, licensed, pre-licensed, intern, depending on what state you're in or what license you have, it's called a number of different things. Um, and typically folks with those, with that level of licensure are not making as much money. Typically, I would say on average, that is the truth. Um, I have helped a number of people in different states where you're allowed to go into private practice right out of grad school, make six figures a year. So these folks could afford to pay your kind of out of pocket normal session rate for supervision. But I think that it is a pretty fair assumption that most of us right out of grad school could not afford too much. I remember paying $80 for out of pocket supervision. Um, and this was 2004. Um, so a good long time ago. Um, I would like to think that inflation should increase the price, but I don't know that it has because also student loans have gone up. So we're not going to get into too much of a financial discussion around that right now. But um, before offering to do individual supervision at a reduced rate, meaning less than whatever your session fee is, I want you to really make sure that you're not going to get resentful when you get to the point in your practice where you are full and you have clients calling wanting to come in and pay you your rate and you've got supervision slots full of people paying less money. I just want you to check in with yourself and be really real with yourself. Um, Cause that's not fair to anybody in that situation. It's not fair to your supervisee. If you're going to be resentful of them, that's going to leak out. Um, it's not fair to the clients wanting to come in if you want to see them and you're maybe stuffing them somewhere in your practice, even though you don't really have time or energy for them. And it's not fair to your bottom line, unless, you feel really passionate about supervision and you really want to provide it and you want to provide it at a rate that the people that you most want to see can afford. So it's all similar to a sliding scale. I just don't want you to get resentful and if you can pretty much guarantee that you won't because um, you're not using it as a stopgap to try to get people in the door, you're using it um, as like a really well thought out piece of your practice um, that it's a calling for you to be, to be able to provide this, then please do it. Um, so I have supervision for somebody who's associate licensed, and it's because she's phenomenal. I'm so picky. I'm super picky. And historically, I've not minded it, and I still don't mind the financial piece of it, uh, because it's a really great fit to provide C. Um, if you're doing things like reviewing recordings, um, I really want you to make sure you're counting that time when you think about what you should get paid for supervision. Now, if you're, if you're certified, maybe you're a certified play therapist or certified EMDR, I'm a certified eating disorder specialist, um, I also do certification supervision, and I charge my full session fee for that, it's the same amount. These supervisees have always been in private practice, and they can't afford the investment because they're, they're rolling along nicely in their private practices. And I am equally picky about my certification supervisees as I am my licensure supervisees, because I see this as a relationship. Um, and I want our relationship to be really strong for those moments in supervision that can be tough, when I might need to be more directive, or they might need to be assertive with me about the way I said something. You know, I just, I want to be picky and have the right people in there. Um, another option for fee setting for supervision is group soup. Um, that way, each person is paying less to be there, which is easier for their wallets, um, and you're essentially making more per hour, so it's kind of a win-win for everyone. And I really think there's great utility to group soup because you hear about other people's clients who you might not be working with as a supervisee, and you can really learn from their experience. And then when that person walks in, I guess, similar kind of presenting concern walks into your office, um, you have a little bit more of a grasp of it than you would have otherwise. So there are some, some things to think about. I'm not going to give you a number. Sorry if you wanted a number. Um, but I want you to think about it in these ways. And if you want help thinking about other practice ideas, I totally have your back over in the Abundance Party. You can check it out at AbundanceParty.com. If you have questions for Ask Allison, please shoot me an email at ask at AbundancePracticeBuilding.com. Have a great day.